Well hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wild Your Garden and in this video I'm going to be talking about how you can make your very own bee hotel. Now the reason <laughs> I'm in a garage is because it's absolutely pouring down outside but it's, typically it's just eased off now I've set myself up so apologies for the unusually grey backdrop. Normally I'm surrounded by flowers and plants and greenery of some sort but this is probably the dullest backdrop I've got. However it will pick up, I will have to go out at some point and put this thing on the wall so do not panic, it won't just be a grey background for the whole of the video. Anyway. In this video I want to talk to you about the pros and cons of having a bee hotel and how you should be making one because there really is quite a bit of science that's got into and research has gone into how you should be making these things to make sure it benefits the bees because that's the main thing in all of this. Now when we talk about a bee hotel I think it's quite easy to get confused with a bug hotel as well. Now a bug hotel is predominantly um, something that is a lot easier to make, a lot less specific I think in its requirements. So a bug hotel could simply be a crate on the floor filled with dry grass, um, pine cones, logs, bricks, that sort of stuff. And that can be fine. And that works wonders for earwigs, millipedes, centipedes, spiders, wood lice, all kinds of creepy crawlies. So a really good habitat in their own right. But in this video, we're talking about a bee hotel. Now, obviously, a bee hotel is something that is going to attract solitary bees. Now, many, many bees around the world, obviously I'm hoping that this will be a video that will help you wherever you are within the world. So you don't have to be in the UK like I am. It doesn't matter whether you're in the Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere, wherever you are, this really should help bees where you are. The key to this project will just be the hole sizes, which we'll come on to in a little while. So this project is going to solely be for uh, solitary bees, which are bees that basically live their lives alone. They will um, find a burrow, the females will find a burrow, they'll lay their, their larvae in the burrow, and then they'll then bring lots of pollen, um, stuff it in the hole, and then seal the hole up, uh, quite often with mud or sort of sand, that sort of thing, or quite often a mix of the two, um, to create a nice kind of impermeable, bar impermeable barrier um, that hopefully will prevent any parasitic wasps, that sort of thing, coming in and laying their eggs inside the larvae or in the chamber of the larvae, which will, of course, then eat the larvae of the solitary bees. It's a cruel world, nature. Um, so, but I just want you to get a bit of the background info about these um, amazing insects before we embark on this journey because they really do need our help and in particular here in the UK we're looking to help things such as the red masonry bee um, which is a wonderful bee that uh, as I say is a solitary bee when we think of our bumblebees obviously uh, they tend to form more sort of smaller colonies um, usually underground in holes that sort of thing and then of course we've got the honeybee which are actually uh, normally found within a beehive obviously and they are farmed for their honey predominantly so the types of bees as i say we're looking to attract by building one of these structures is going to be uh, solitary bees now to make the most of this habitat we're going to be looking to drill a range of holes into bits of wood now you've probably been to your local supermarket your local garden center and seen lots of bee hotels or bee hotels um, which you can buy for probably a fiver and realistically they're not that good long term for bees now i'll tell you why because a lot of them are quite shallow the, the, the tubes are often uh, from canes and don't get me wrong uh, a bamboo cane or anything like that can be a good habitat for these solitary bees but it's the depth of them now in all of the holes i'm going to be drilling into this wood which we'll come on to in a second they're all going to be a minimum of five to six inches or sort of 125 to 150 millimeters or 12 and a half to 15 centimeters deep. And that's the important part about all of this is the depth of the hole. Um, if they are simply too shallow, you know, just a couple of inches, it's just not gonna work for the bees. They, they, they need that depth uh, because a lot of bees will lay multiple um, larvae through the hole as well. So they'll lay uh, one larvae, then they'll seal it off with some food inside, then they'll lay a separate chamber and they'll do this a few times within, um, you know, the side of these bee hotels. And you can get expensive ones that are, are quite a bit of money where you can actually see in the side of them. But in this video, obviously, I want to show you exactly how you can make one of these very cost effectively and really make a difference to the bees in your area. 
So that's a little bit of the theory behind why you should be making these and obviously the sort of bees you can help around the world. Now, depending on what country you're in, of course, you will get different bees. Um, obviously, they won't just be the species we get here in the UK, but it will still help bees. Now, the holes I'm going to be drilling in this piece of wood are going to be ranging from two millimeters to 10 millimeters. And I'll show you the drill bits in a little while. But that's the important thing is to have a range of hole sizes drilled into the wood. So therefore you're offering homes to lots of different bees. So that's the key thing in all of this. Now, when it comes to the wood itself, and I'll show you a bit about the, all this is is three pieces of wood. That's it, that's all you need for this whole job. And as I say, the canes work and you can put a little frame around them and hang them on the wall they'll be fine but obviously they're they're more difficult to look after and you know they, they just i think something like this is a very very natural finish and you'll see why so i have got myself a bit of five inch by five inch oak or 12 and a half by 12 and a half centimeters um this is untreated now it's best obviously if you can to use untreated timbers because bees along with many other animals are obviously highly sensitive creatures so they will want to have something that's as natural as possible so if you're using treated wood they will use they will still use treated wood but it's best if you can the same with bats if you're making bat boxes that sort of thing and obviously do check the channel out i've done videos on how to make bird boxes bat boxes and i'll put a couple of links in at the end of this video but untreated timber is the best for them if you can now the main piece of wood we're using, as I say, this is a piece of seasoned oak, so it's going to be <laughs> pretty, pretty tough to drill, I've no doubt. Uh, but you don't have to use oak, you can just get like a, a fence post or something from your local garden centre. Just make sure it's untreated, please, if you can. Um, it will just make a difference. It will be more appealing and more natural, obviously, for the, for the bees. Now, something like oak is obviously very, very long-lasting outside in the air. So, um, But because this isn't going in the ground, if you do use untreated timbers, such as softwoods like pine, you shouldn't have to worry. You should still get a good few years out of one of these if it's hung in the right place. So I've got my main black block of wood I'm going to drill my holes into. And I've got what's called a backing plate. Now this is treated, but this doesn't matter because this is going to be um, on the back of the, the piece of oak, which is going to be used to fix. I'm going to fix top and bottom into the south facing wall that that's going onto, or this insect hotel is going onto. And the third piece I've got, a bit of an eclectic mix, but it doesn't really matter, like I say, um, it's just a piece of larch. Now this is left over from a recent project where I've built a bird hide. I'll put a link in at the end of this video to that one if you haven't seen it already. Fantastic project in Scotland that was, and this is a little bit of a leftover from the cladding, and I've just squared it up so that it's going to sit on top of this block of wood and just act as a nice overhang. Now, while I'm on this point, I might as well make it clear. Um, the reason you want a little bit of an overhang is because uh, the main killer actually of the bees through um, the winter months is actually damp. They don't like it damp. They need to be dry if they can. So where you can get, get a bit of a lid on top just to stop the rain and things hitting what will be the face of the timber because you really do want to keep them as dry as possible. And if you can obviously take them inside in the winter months so that they can go inside your garage or something like that or boot room or whatever, just so that you can keep them dry and warm obviously so they don't freeze. You know, a lot of them perish through cold and that's why the holes are better to be deeper because they'll be obviously warmer in the center of the wood rather than right on the edge and, and more susceptible to frost and a very cold winters. Not that we seem to be having many of those these days here in the UK. So your lid, if you like, um, the top plate is, I just do, do a little bit of an overhang, just an inch or so either side or two, two and a half centimeters either side to make sure. So if your timber is five inches by five inches, do the top plate seven by seven or you know seven by six and you'll have a nice little overhang but we'll start to look at that in a moment when we knock it together um so yes that's basically the three pieces that you need so all the, the only other things you will need are a drill sorry if you haven't got one it doesn't have to be cordless like this a corded one but the main thing are uh, the drill bits themselves which i'll show you now now i'm going to be using a range that's a a two mil <laughs> right up to I've got a bigger one in the other box I'll get out in a minute that's an eight mil so you can see those are the sort of diameters we're going to need in order to create a variety of holes for the variety of bees that are likely to visit so 
that's a bit about the theory those are the items you're going to need other than that you'll just need here's some i got earlier um a couple of 50 mil or two inch screws and a couple of <laughs> there we go a couple of raw plugs uh, to go in the wall if you're fixing this to a wall obviously if you're fixing it to a fence post or anything like that then you should be able to drill straight through into the fence post itself so a uh, couple of screws a couple of fixings that's all you're going to need other than that we've got our main block of wood we've got our backing plate we've got our top plate let's start putting this together so all I've done as you can see is literally just flip this thing upside down so the backing plate is now facing me and the main block of wood that's going to have the holes drilled in is underneath so what I'm going to do now is just put a few 50 mil screws two inch screws in the back probably four two at the bottom two at the top just so this thing is going to be fixed nice and securely to the oak There you go, so that is now nicely fixed. You can start to see how this is going to look when it's hung on the wall. So next bit is the top plate. So let's get that offered up and just see how that looks. So again, this has got a slight overhang either side, as you can see, just there. So and all I'm gonna do is put a few nails in the top of this because I don't wanna split the wood. Screws are likely to split it. I'm just gonna get a few nails almost forgot one of the key components to mention hammer i'm sure most of you have got one of these and i've just got some 60 mil or two and a half inch ish um, stainless steel nails just to go into the top so i'm just going to put four of those in the top just to save this and uh, just help basically fix the lid to the main part Well, that's the top well and truly fixed on. So all that's left to do now before we fit this thing to the wall is absolutely pepper it with holes. Now, I won't make you sit through me drilling all those holes, so I'll put a bit of a clip in of me doing this. And then obviously we'll take this thing outside and I'll explain a bit more about where to hang it and how to hang it. Well, I'm quite happy with that. I've gone through as deep as I can with the drill bits. Now, I would say at this point in time, it is important to make sure there are as little splinters and bits for the bees to catch themselves on as possible. So just go through the holes a couple of times if you can, uh, and obviously just pull off any little sharp bits around the edges of the holes. Well, I think this thing's ready for going up. Let's get it outside and get it on a wall. Okay, well, as you can see, one times raring to go B Hotel. Now, again, the reason I say do a mixed size of holes is just to make sure you can um, cater for as many bees as possible. And as I say, the most common species are things like the red mason bees, which will want the 10 millimeter holes. And the key to the success of this is the size of the holes. Some of the shop bought ones, some of the canes can be, you know, a lot bigger in size and therefore it's just not right for them. Um, and obviously they can then become open to um, parasitization from other wasps more easily and that sort of thing. So yes, two to 10 mil, put a range through there. I've done two, four, six, eight, and 10 all the way through this piece of wood. So yes, it should really cater for a lot of insects. Now, in terms of where to put your insect hotel, as I said before, we want to we'll put the roof on it to keep them as dry as possible. 
but we also want to make sure they're as warm as possible so south southeast southwest facing is best if you can for these bees this is a south facing garage wall in a wildlife garden that i've just finished well once this is up um so do check that video out at the end of this one where it's a really nice transformation of a little urban wildlife garden um, from start to finish it was just literally a piece of grass and now it's well i'll let you see the video but if you can put this on a south facing wall like i say and height wise just kind of a meter to a meter and a half so um you know something like that so that you can maintain it easily enough and we'll come on to maintenance in a moment now I've already pre-drilled a couple little holes top and bottom just to make sure that um, just to make sure that it's easy to get the drill through and I'll show you why in a moment so get it where you want it to be I think that's a good height personally um, now depending on the size of the raw plug I'm stepping over into sort of building territory here but the raw plug is obviously going to sit in the brickwork and then provide somewhere for your screw to go into so that's a raw plug if you didn't know these are six mil raw plugs so I'm just using a, a six mil drill bit to go through the timber multi-purpose drill bit mark the stone then I can pull the box away and go through and make the final hole so with one hand <laughs> I'm going to go through the timber and straight into the wood into the wall And the bottom one first just check at this point obviously that it's level but you can do this once you are hopefully the brick works level right that's marked the wall so now I'm just going to swap to a slightly bigger drill bit for making the hole for the raw plugs themselves in the wall and now you've got your holes marked you can see exactly where you need to be just switch to hammer fingers crossed it all lines up I know I've got another raw plug in here somewhere. Take my keys out, that'll help. Right, two raw plugs, two holes. Should be simple. And they should just nicely snug in just like that. Bit of a tip for you now. Oh, forgot to bring the impact driver out with me. Obviously, you don't need one of these. You can just use a good old fashioned uh, posi drive screwdriver. I'm sure most of you have got one of those knocking about in the kitchen drawer. I certainly have two or three, never find the right size when I want them. Bit of a tip for you, before you offer your B Hotel up, if you're doing this on your own, put the screw in your timber first and you don't have to try and line your screw up and then put your drill on whilst trying to hold it. An absolute nightmare. So I'm gonna just put this screw in the top first. Just makes life a lot easier. That's just poking out the back. Then you can get your, have a look down the side. without getting sawdust in your eye. Right, that's in enough until I can get this one in. And tighten the top up. Solid as a rock. So there you have it one times b hotel fitted to your wall and ready for its first occupants i suppose um yeah just make sure the holes are as clean as possible like i say with any little sharp bits sticking out you just don't want any of that when the bees turn up to make their new home now in terms of maintaining these now this can be the difference between successful b hotel and extending the life of it and not now if you just simply leave these holes then in time they can build up with kind of mold um, parasites and you can get all kinds of disease and things in them so it is very very important to clean them out periodically now it's like asking me when the best time to prune a herbaceous border is you want to leave the seeds for the winter for the birds but you don't want to do it too late in the spring when larval food plants might uh, you know larvae might be moving in 
So yes, it's a very, very fine line when you're cleaning these things out. You want to ideally do it in the spring because a lot of the grubs will obviously overwinter, the larvae will overwinter in these holes until the following spring when they will emerge as adults. Then once they've left, and you can see, and you can tell if there's something still in the hole because you will see the very face of the hole will be sort of covered up almost nice and flush with the front of the bee hotel with mud. So that will imply that there are still larvae in there waiting to come out. When you see that they've kind of burst through that and the mud has gone, absolutely you can then get in. And the best way to do it is with like a little um, sort of a bottle cleaner. I'll put a screenshot in of the sort of thing I mean. You can get them down to very, very fine ones. And then you can just sort of, you know, clean the holes out, um, you know, make sure they are sterilized, a bit like you sterilize nest boxes, bird boxes in the winter months to stop the ticks and things overwintering in them. Um, you know, you can just use boiling water on the nest boxes, for example, just to kill the ticks off. Obviously in here, you've got to be careful because you may have other larvae nearby. So, you know, just do it very tentatively um, or delicately, I should say, when you are checking them. But in theory, that's all you have to do. A bit of a clean out once a year. Other than that, you will just thoroughly love seeing the bees coming and going from these wonderful boxes. And if you're really, really lucky, I know it's not a great outcome for the bees. You might get something like a, a ruby-tailed wasp turn up, which is an incredible insect. And I mean, it's like a a flying jewel. Uh, these are obviously parasitic and they will lay their eggs in the same chambers which will then in turn parasitize the bees but that's part of nature. It happens in almost every element of life there are parasitic species. So um, look at the cuckoo for example. <laughs> you know, that's effectively you know the chick of the cuckoo kicks its kicks the eggs out of the host species but then you know they are an incredible species and one that has developed to live its life in that way. So Yes, if you haven't seen on the channel already, do check out my cuckoo rescue I managed a couple of years ago. Found a juvenile cuckoo on the side of the road. Wonderful, wonderful experience. Um, yeah, just, just check it out. It was really, really magical. Anyway, I really hope that's given you a good idea as to how you can make one of these little bee hotels very quickly. Without me waffling on, I probably could have made this, and I'm sure even you guys, um, with if you haven't got much carpentry experience, you know, um, can make one of these very, very quickly. I didn't, I realised, talk about how long the back plate boot should be. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how long the front, the front main box should be. Um, this can be, you know, just 12 centimetres. Uh, sorry, 12 inches, 30 centimetres if you want it to be. This face here is actually 40 centimetres or uh, about 16 inches, but that doesn't matter. It can be whatever you want it to be. The main thing is the hole size. And obviously, I think that the research that's gone into these has shown that the bigger these are, you can see some really massive ones, it can attract a lot of parasitic wasps and a lot of disease and fungal infections. So you're better off having few, um, sorry, smaller but, but more of these rather than having, you know, one giant one. So I would dot these around the garden where you can. Like I say, south facing is the main thing, not on a south, not on a north facing wall or in the shade and equally away from bushes and shrubs as well. So the bees have got good access and they're not casting shade over these, um, well, incredible little sort of um, micro habitats, really. They are, an, they are almost a, a little mini kind of village in their own right for bees it was absolutely wonderful to see so let me know how you get on get some of these made it will cost you a few pounds if that you know you really don't need a lot just a block of wood a bit of a roof plate and this gravel board is just simply gravel board this back plate is pressure treated gravel board that you can get from your local diy center fencing center just literally it's the kickboard that goes around the bottom of a fence the top the top can be whatever you want it to be just to keep the weather out and the main piece as i say if you can untreated timber as chunky as you like doesn't matter at all um, just the depth of the hole and the size of the hole are the key components in how successful one of these would be anyway i won't waffle on any longer guys thanks so much for watching get out there make yourself one of these make yourself 10 of these if you want and spread them around the garden they're absolutely brilliant i'm sure you'll love seeing what creatures visit and keep your eye out for the tiny tiny ones because of course the two mil holes in this are for very, very small bees indeed. So keep your eyes peeled. Thanks very much for watching. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give the video a like and I'll be sure to bring you many more ways in which you can help wildlife in videos to come. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.